Okay, how would you feel if you could draw this too? Well, I'm going to break it down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you learn not only the painting techniques, but also the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Having said that, within the app Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And the color profile I'm using is the sRGB code that ends in 2.1. And again, it's in Procreate on the list. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using within airbrushing the soft brush and maybe the medium brush. Within Artistic, I'm going to be using the Aurora brush. And within the Organic, I'm going to be using the Rainforest brush. And in terms of the colours, I've already pre-selected a colour palette. Each of these colours has associated with it, if you go down to the value section, a hexadecimal code. Each of these codes is listed down in the video description. Take a note of them, type them into this area one at a time, press enter. The colour will appear up here, and then you can piece it together yourself. Or next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the colour file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can go and gain access to exclusive content, extended versions of these tutorials, and of course support this channel. And I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who do support the channel currently or have in the past. It really does make a huge difference in my ability to keep this channel going. So thank you so much for your support, it's really appreciated. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. On layer one, I'm going to go to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the first color on the top row. I'm going to put the brush size at, well, maybe about 12%, 100% opacity. And then just near the top, I'm going to do a band of that. Stay on the same layer, go to the next color. And then just so it slightly overlaps with the top one, we'll do a band of the second color. Tap on it again, the third color. Again, it does overlap. Fourth color. And then fifth color. And we're just at this point, not quite at halfway. Then we're gonna go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur that in to so about the 30% will do. Deselect. We're going to go to our layers and create a new layer. Layer 2. We're going to go back to our brushes. We're going to use the artistic Aurora brush. Now I'm going to reset it. Then I'm going to tap on it again so you can see exactly what I've done. I'm not changing anything other than going to the color dynamics and changing the hue from 16% to none. And that just means when we use it, we don't get any real color variation. There's a slight difference in tone, but I don't mind that. So I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the first color on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush size down to 2% and 100% opacity. And just a little bit up from halfway, I'm going to draw a line across. Hold it until it snaps. And if you're not sure whether it's completely horizontal, well, you can just with a, your other hand put your finger down and then it's created that completely horizontal line for you and from that point i'm just going to bring the brush up into spikes and then scribble it downwards so we get this nice kind of cone shape that's going to represent our trees and we'll do this at various points all the way across to fill that entire kind of horizon line now we want the trees to be various sizes maybe some gaps too. And some of the trees might be kind of wider than others. Again, some of them shorter. You can vary them up as you go along. Now it's just gonna take a couple of minutes to build these in, not too long in the scheme of things, but yes, it will take a couple of minutes. They are kind of a background feature, but 
spend a little bit of time. You could always get the spikes in there first, get the heights, if you prefer to work that way. Get the tree trunks in. Again, it's fine to be rough. Some of these you're not going to see, it's going to be obscured by more foreground details. But then once you've got the main heights in, then you can just quickly go in and scribble in the rest of the tree quite easily. You will get quicker at these the more you do. Okay, so once we've done that all the way across, I might just go to the transform and I might just move it down a little bit. I think I just want a little bit more of that light color to come into the horizon or the lower part of the sky rather. I think I'm a little bit happier with that. I'm then going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur that in just to the top end of 3%. I'm then going to go to that layer and tap on it and put on the alpha lock which means we can go back in with something like the airbrushing soft brush go back to our colors now we've used the first color we're going to go for the second color and let's consider our size we're going to put it down to about five percent and about 20 percent strength and we can just go in there now and we can vary up the look of some of these trees you don't want it to look too flat maybe just some of them a more foreground you can just change the hue on them a little bit not too much though i'm going to tap on the layer again turn off the alpha lock then i'm going to slide and duplicate that layer i'm going to go to the transform flip it horizontal deselect then i'm going to go back to the layer i've go to the one on the underneath tap on the little n and then scroll the op opacity down Maybe not too far, but to about 70%. And then I can also go back to the transform and on freeform, just pinch it down a little bit. So they're not really higher than the ones that are in the foreground. Just we'll push them back a little bit more. So that's just going to increase the sense of depth and more layers. So I'm going to go back to the first layer and create a new layer above that, layer three. Importantly, it is behind the trees. I think it just works better that way. I'm going to go to the blend mode by tapping on the little n and scroll down to add and on this layer i'm going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing i'm going to go in with the fourth color on the top row i'm going to put it down to two percent size maybe 20 percent strength and i'm just going to put a point where i think the sun might it to be it might just be sort of peeking behind the tree there a little bit then i'm going to turn it down to five percent from there, we're going to just send out some streaks where the sun is just catching the underneath of clouds, perhaps. Just a slight angle to this. So we are just using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to take your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price, and you can access over 20 different categories such as fur, lettering, nature, animals, and many others. So for example, a quick search of snow and the results give you tons of different winter and snow brushes, which could be really useful for adding that extra something to your artwork. Start now and get the first seven days for free and join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. Don't have to spend too long on this. Maybe I'll put it up again to Top end of 3% size. As we go further up, we can just allow it to become a little bit more softer edged. Just with some dashes, the texture continues up there a little bit. Back down 2%. And as we come down here, we can have more of that sun just joining together in kind of streaks. Okay, we go back to layer 2, put on the alpha lock, and then with the soft brush with an airbrushing i'm going to go to the second color on the top row four percent size 20 percent opacity and i'm just going over where the sun is here and just bringing some of that warmth into the trees that are immediately in that area just extend that glow a little bit not too much just a bit 
And I also think I could go in with the eraser, set to the soft brush still, 5% size, 10% opacity, and I'm just going to subtly soften, subdue some of these just so they kind of disappear into the sun there just a little bit. Again, not too much, just a hint. I think that just works a little bit better. Okay, we're going to take all of the layers that we've got and we're going to duplicate them. Simplest way we're going to do that is to turn off the background color, untick it, go to the wrench, add, copy canvas, and then immediately paste it. Now you won't see the difference, but it has now created at the top of the layers, a new layer, which is a duplication of everything that's now visible, which means we can go to the transform, flip it vertically, and then move that down into the lower part of our canvas, like so. And that's created a really useful reflection. Then I'm gonna retick the color background. And on this new inserted layer, we're gonna to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur that across to about the 5% first, then go back in maybe to the motion blur, and then just bring it down, maybe to about the 30%. And you can see it's revealed a little bit of a stripe there, and that's not really a problem. Go back to the transform and just pinch it up until they kind of rejoin. If we're missing a little bit of the sides, then just sort that out. Then we're going to create a new layer, layer five. We're going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing still, and we're going to go for the third color on the middle row. 10% size, 10% opacity, and I just want to go over the horizon line there and just bring it down just so we really subdue some of those trees down we don't need to go all the way down to the bottom but just to make sure that we're knocking back some of those trees and that's really the important part create a new layer go to the airbrushing medium brush still the third color we're going to put it at maybe eight percent size 100% opacity, and again, just on that top area, try to match it up with that horizon line. Hold it till it snaps. Then we can go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we can just blur that to about the 25%. Go to my layers and create a new layer again. And I'm gonna to go to the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm gonna use the second color on the middle row. 3% size. 10% opacity, and we're just gonna start from over here, build in just a bit of a land feature, a little bit of a rise that maybe slopes in and that slopes back out again. Once we've kind of got that shape defined a little bit, we can put it up from two to five perhaps, and then we can just blot in that lower section a little bit. Okay, we'll come back and define that a little bit more. I'm going to stay on the same layer. I'm going to go in with the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go to the colors. I'm going to choose the sixth color on the middle row. 1% size and 100% opacity. And just from this mound, I'm going to build up a tree trunk. I don't want to go in completely off the canvas. So there's about high enough. Maybe a companion to go with it a little shorter. Go over it a little bit more to really firm up the base of that tree trunk doesn't need to be hugely large but yeah a little bit then i'm going to go to the artistic aurora brush again again the hue variation is set to none just as it was before so we've already amended it we don't need to amend it again two percent size 100 percent opacity and i'm just going to start rocking in left to right at the top of the tree a little bit now it's definitely more detailed than the, the background ones we're going to leave some noticeable gaps. Just get some kind of more character into these trees. So I'll zoom in just a, a little bit and you can see a little bit better. And I'm allowing these branches to kind of appear heavy. I'm going to have snow resting on them in this environment. So they're going to slope more downwards. It's quite a nice textured brush naturally so does some of the work for us which is great and 
and then we need to also do the other tree and neglect it too much again gaps are absolutely fine in this type of tree so feel free to have it a little bit sparser in some areas that can work really effectively Don't worry too much about the bottom. We're going to add some snow that will just kind of blend them together a little bit with the mound that they're growing from. Just perhaps just broadening up this tree a little bit more, make it a bit bigger. Allow it to close up some of those gaps in places too. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in a little bit, maybe 2%. Then I'm going to go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. I'm going to go in with the medium brush with an airbrushing. And I'm going to darken this up somewhat. So I'm going to go for the eighth color, the strong color, 2% size, not massively strong, maybe 20% opacity. Yeah, we just need to defining the tree trunks maybe even lower on that percentage actually one percent size get the tree trunks in there again again it's on alpha lock so you can't vary too much you won't really go out of the boundaries and put it up to three percent size and just just tap in so we're getting some nice darker variations in there as well and i think especially near the top where it's not so much factored into the mist and then as we get lower down, perhaps it's just going to be more affected by a low line mist. I think that works better. Then we're going to create a new layer, layer eight, go to our organic rainforest brush. I'm going to go to the seventh color. I'm going to put it to 1% size, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to build on to some of these areas now, some snow that's rested so what we just added really was just a kind of a shape rough textures and we didn't need to worry too much because now we're adding snow on top of it and largely it's going to cover up areas anyway so you're only going to see bits of the original structure left by the end so we just keep building up this snow and leave some gaps but it, yeah it just Adds a lot more kind of depth to this tree. Really nice texture on top. Again, it's not hugely painstaking, just texture. And we can just build it up. I might just take those layers and merge them together, pinch them together, like so. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in overall, maybe 2%. Maybe go back in with the airbrushing, the soft brush, put it to second color on the middle row, 5% size, 10% opacity, and just at the bottom there, we just want to have the mist kind of making some of that disappear in there a little bit to the mound area okay we're going to create a new layer layer eight going with the soft brush with an airbrushing and again we're going to go in with the seventh color on the middle row one percent size initially and maybe 40 percent opacity and i'm just going to build in some more organic things low-lying details perhaps some more branches and twigs things that are just added to the mix bring in some kind of small anomalies maybe put the brush size up to two percent now and we can just bring in some kind of bits of the snow where something's fallen in or you can see something growing through tufts of something we're just creating smaller kind of breaks perhaps i'll turn the opacity down again to 20% and we can do this a bit more subtly then extend some of these textures off on either side of that slope and you can really see that it's just kind of grounding it better and it's looking quite nice okay 
can just add some points into these lower areas just to break up the kind of snow texture. I'm going to start introducing more of a kind of hint of blue. So we're going to go for the third color on the bottom row. Stay on this same layer. I'm going to put it up to 3% size, 20% opacity still. Maybe I could just go over this a little bit with that blue. Bring out some of that tone. I think it will benefit and even let it extend behind there a little bit too. I do think that's just bringing it further forward in a nice way. I'm going to put it up 5% size, 10% opacity. And let's bring that color further down here. Now we can still see the trees in this area and we don't really want it there. So I'm going to go back to the layer that had the trees there which is that inserted image above layer two. And I'm gonna go in with the smudge set to the soft brush. I'm gonna have it at 5% size, maybe 70% opacity. And just, if I just drag the brush across a little bit like this, it will just get rid of that tree detail in the in areas where we don't want it. All the way up to about here, I suggest. And that just looks less water like there. I've still got it reserved for there but here it looks better now back up to the top layer back to the soft brush with an airbrushing and i'm going to go for the second color on the bottom row five percent size ten percent opacity and we're going to bring this cool color down move the canvas up a little bit and we're going to have it coming down into this lower section we can just go over it a few times down here it doesn't matter if we get a little bit of banding because we're going to have textures in the snow anyway ripples I'm going to keep building that up in this lower section. I prefer to do this kind of thing more gradually. I don't like to just turn a high percentage and do too much at once. I think sometimes these things just need to build up more gradually. I'm going to turn it on its side. I want to build in here. We're getting these nice cool colours closer to us. I like to keep building then softly fade it off as it goes higher up darker down here something like this okay we're going to add a new layer layer nine and i'm going to go in with a soft brush again and i'm going to go to the sixth color on the bottom row i'm going to put the brush size at two percent and maybe about 40 percent opacity and i'm just going to pick up a point where I want the snow and the water's edge just to be creeping out and then I'm going to drag it bring it in maybe slope it further down as it comes over towards the right a little bit or bits that just creep outwards there and again just start to slope down as they come this way and you can sort of join up here as well a piece over here that creeps out Maybe some just some little features. Then we can just sort of thicken these up a little bit. So we start off thin and we can just bring them up. It's like a wedge shape where it's narrow over here and then it gets broader this way upwards and downwards. What do you want? Bring some lines across over here some ripples and lines on that surface kind of looks pretty good i think we can have a few anomalies just sticking out into the water over here as well then we're going to create a new layer layer 10 we're going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing and we're going to go for this dark color so it's the seventh color on the bottom row two percent size 20 percent opacity and we're just going to start giving some of these bits of snow where they meet the water a little bit more volume because they're casting a shadow on one edge where they're not facing the sun and it's just going to give them yeah like i say more volume and it's just going to really help the separation between these areas and the water it's really going to make a big difference so i'm just going to do it more in the foreground we'll use a different warmer color 
or a different softer colour as we get further away. Yeah, so we're just creating some subtle shadows. You don't need to do a huge amount of this, but certainly some. Like I say, it instantly just creates that separation between different areas. I want to increase the sense of volume, but not, not be too, too much with it. I'm going to try for a different colour. I'm going to go for the six colour on the middle row. And yeah, I'm going to use that in conjunction with that really nice dark colour we've just used. Just to balance it out a little bit. Bring some stripes in there. I'm going to go now to this strong blue, the first colour on the bottom row. Still with a soft brush, 2% size and still 20% opacity. And... Yeah, we're just going to start creeping in some of this blue in this bottom area. I'm going to do it on the same layer. Let's bring some stripes of this across. Maybe put it up to 3% size and just bring some, especially at that bottom edge there a little bit. But also just creeping up from the bottom. Just some hints of that blue. Maybe 20% is a little strong, so I'm going to put it down to 10 and I'm also going to increase up to 5% size and just introduce a hint more of this blue in that bottom edge. I don't want to do too much of that, but just a bit more. I'm going to go to the third colour on the bottom row. Still the soft brush, 2% size, 10% opacity. And we can just create some more shifts, some little anomalies in here. In fact, I think I'd rather go for something a bit warmer. So I'm going to go for the six color on the middle row. 2% size, maybe up to 20% strength again. And then, yeah, I'm just going to feature in some little anomalies in the snow, just like we did kind of back there. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal by tapping on the end. Scroll down to add. I'm going to go in with a soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to put it to about 20% size, but really low at 2% opacity. I'm going to go for this red color at the end of the bottom row. And I'm just going to bring it into this area, bring some of that warmth in there. I think it's really going to radiate that really nice glow. And you can see the effect of that. If we remove it, it definitely adds something really nice. And I'm going to turn it down to 2% size and maybe up to 5% strength. And we're going to come down from the sun and I'm going to increase the glow in the area coming down into this part. So immediately down from the sun in the water and this whole region, I'm just going to increase that glow. Maybe we could even put it up to 4% just to get more of that impact in there. Then I'm going to turn it down 2%, put it up to 10% strength. And again, just start to really build this in. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Just channeling this color down into this area. We can feed it up from there as well. Just going over it, building it up. Then I'm going to switch to maybe the fourth color. We will need to turn this back down 5%. And yes, it's going to be significantly brighter. I'm going to put it actually down to the 1% size. That way we can just start to fragment it. We're going to have ripples in the water. We can just break this up a little bit. To put it up slightly to two percent all 
and you can see it's really channeling it down into that area now which I think is quite effective. And we could always go in with something like the smudge tool, set it to medium brush with an airbrushing, put it down to 2% size, 30% strength, and well, we could always just soften that in a little bit, especially if it comes further down here. We can just push that around a little bit, but even up there too. Just helps get rid of some of the, the lines that you might not be happy with, and I think that definitely brings out a, a really nice quality and I'm very happy with that. Back to the brush, 2% size, 10% strength. And again, we perhaps just push some of these highlights up here a little bit to exaggerate them. Just fine tune. One last layer, layer 12. So in with the soft brush, low on the 2% size 15 percent opacity and i'm going to go for the ninth color on the middle row and it's just going to be useful for creating just some little anomalies things that are here more in the foreground in the snow i don't really feel inclined to go overboard with that i could even use it to firm up some of these shadows things in the water again i think it'd be easy to just overdo some things, but subtlety, I think, would be really good. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Do hit the subscribe if you haven't done already. Leave me a comment, it really helps the channel out. Give me some suggestions, the kind of things you might want to see in the future. Otherwise, I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.